gun has turned off, you know. How can you tell? Well, look how cold it's getting. the world's problems can be attributed to inadequate poltergeist refunds, but this is not one of them. The present turning off of the sun is basically another pseudo-Soviet attempt at menage à trois, as they say. But little do they realize that there will be more than merely localized effects. The par paradox that arises here is analogous to the age-old problem of whether the son, as well as the father, is allowed to dispatch the Holy Ghost. Clearly, there are only four possible answers, but complications arise when we try to put similar redundancies into any perspective involved blue megalomaniacs who surreptitiously digest outlandish and sometimes reprehensible overtures of hysteria. To fully comprehend the problem would necessitate the assimilation of several years of biophysical upholstery which goes well beyond the scope of this course. I would like to emphasize at this point that a large spaceship has been constructed to escape what must certainly be extinction of life on Earth by colonizing Artin 7, a planet known to be much like our own. The ship leaves in about 15 minutes, and those of you who seek salvation should obtain a fly authorization from the front desk here and proceed directly to the launching site. But is this an adequate fulfillment of metaphysical query? To put it more bluntly, could this be symbolic of the conflict between the exclusive dichotomy of Eros and Thanatos? And the very real need to feel that we are not merely milking machines for the eternal forward counter, whose only justification for linguistic dissertation is the fact that no matter how long the
You killed him. Listen, son. I died twice in South Africa, but I worked my way up to the top again. has a rheostat linked in staggered series to a uh, diaphragm siphon. Could it be a counting diffuser? Well, it's nothing of the sort, of course. But you certainly speak the language. What is it, then? Well, I couldn't really say offhand. But this is only one of many dozen important experiments we're conducting simultaneously. I leave most of the routine details to my students. Would you like a quick tour? one of our newest projects. We're trying to analyze the mystical properties of empty space. Then, is this a resonance couple? <coughs> well, suppose you, you, you could look upon it that way, yeah, yes. if you used a logarithmic transducer in phase with the reticulum instead of an isotropic angstrom unit to reduce the metaphysical fluctuations. 
I'm sure there'll be all sorts of superpositions and uh, Doppler effects. It's, it's, it's just much too messy. This measures secretions of the obituary gland. I see it's not arranged to simultaneously calibrate infinity. Yes, well, don't want to make things too easy, you know. <laughs> In fact, if you are perceptive enough, you may be surprised to notice what else it doesn't do. Ah, yes. I see. Ingenious. This machine, the NMR Ubiquitron, monitors reality and immediately reports any blatant violations of the physical laws. We had a violation of charge conservation just the other day, but thanks to the Ubiquitron, we were able to make a quick arrest. And here, we have the dorsally ramified laser phaser. It is demonstrating that although Heisenberg certainly is on principle, it is possible to synchronize faith, hope, and charity by applying the quark theory of meson dogma. Though at temperatures below absolute zero, it turns yellow. Which brings us to our toughest experiment, a rather original adaptation of the standard coincidence regulator. We've been using it since 1760 to condense black holes, but with limited success as of yet. The miniature faith healing devices and resurrection machines you see being constructed The increased sensory would be highly uncomfortable if And here, son, let me confide in you. At this moment, I'm on the threshold of something really big, a complete correlation of the physical structure of the brain with its mental activity. Actually, it's completely obvious once you hit on it. But no one, and I can say this with complete confidence, no one has ever hit on it before. Son, I've simply reversed the process. Listen. How do most researchers proceed to develop a theory of brain function? First, they examine the brain itself. Damn difficult. It's in the head. They take x-rays, record electrical impulses. Bah! It's like trying to find out what's in your car engine by putting a stethoscope to the hood. Or else they extract some moldy dead brain from a corpse. What good is that? It's the living brain that concerns us. But of all these dubious data, they painfully elaborate the most unconvincing model of the brain. Son, do you see what I've done? I've reversed the procedure. How exactly? Instead of starting with the inaccessible organ, I've begun sensibly with the complete, perfect, finished model. After that, you see, why, it's just a question of accurately describing it. But model, how do you decide? That's the beauty of it. Since the structure and function of the brain are substantially unknown, one has virtually complete freedom of choice. Son, here it is. The complete, detailed model. The secret of human preeminence. Remarkable. But that's just a cardboard. Incredible, eh? And it's completely hollow. No one ever suspected that before. And the shape, it's practically a perfect cube. Could anyone tell that by looking at someone's head? But most remarkable is this. Words! This must be the origin of human language!
this time. You'll have to talk to Colonel Bowie. He's gone to the optometrist's. This is a book about why we had the last one, with do-it-yourself instructions.
sun has turned off, you know. Lead me from tortured dreams, tangled themes of thoughts unknown. Why wait the endless years, hidden fears of truth alone? From seeds of confusion, illusions, dark blossoms have grown. Even now as we kneel, do we feel the doubt being sown? My life course is guided, decided by learned strong. On charts of my past ways and path 